thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, what is now episode number five of Where Medicine Meets Ministry, Dr. Cherie Talks Faith and Facts. I am super excited about our guest today. I had the opportunity of meeting this beautiful woman on uh, probably maybe about six, seven weeks ago. And I can tell you that her presence um, and there was a, 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 an anointing, a, a spiritual awakening that just kind of envelops who she is. And uh, there is a sweetness about her that just really attracted me to her. And her story is powerful. And it is perfectly aligned with the mission uh, and purpose of this podcast of Where Medicine Meets Ministry. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to her now. Uh, this woman has been a meditation teacher for 40 plus years, a healer since 2003, and she has created more than 150 products carrying divine frequencies, divine energy, and divine intelligence for healing, growth, and joy. Please help me in welcoming none other than Alora Adelson. Alora, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Dr. Sheree. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm doing wonderfully. It's a great day here in Florida, and I'm communicating to all your listeners out there. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you here. We did not uh, get together and set up our backgrounds, but we both had that greenery in the background. Greenery today is going to exemplify life. Uh, during great minds this, think alike. There you go. Uh, during this time of coronavirus and physical distancing and sheltering in place and this new reality that we have, uh, Allura, I think that what you bring to individuals and organizations is is truly powerful. And the individuals that you have been able to help thus far are faring, I would suspect, so much better than the individuals that did not have the opportunity to have your special healing gifts and, and touch, if you will, in their lives, uh, because those individuals were probably better prepared for what we are experiencing now. But that's why I wanted to introduce you to my audience, because I believe that what you have to offer them is going to help them through this current time and then to help refocus their mindset, if you will, as they face our new reality, a new reality for our individual selves, for our families, for our communities, and for the world. You know, this is going to be a new time for us. And so everything I, has changed. Everything has changed. Um, and therefore, the divine healing that you speak about and teach about and possess, I think is going to be very helpful for individuals to hear and understand. Now, when you and I met, you shared a very significant, powerful, uh, it brought me to tears when you initially told me what happened or, or told the rest of the audience what happened. But then those, those tears became tears of joy because you shared how it impacted you. And I'm, I'm talking about your eldest son, Jeffrey, right? Did I right. It correctly? Exactly right. Tell my audience about Jeffrey. Tell me about what was going on in your life at that time. It is amazing how shifting and changing can take place and transformation can take place in our lives. You can be going along perfectly, wonderfully, and boom, a wrench is thrown in your works. Jeffrey had had cancer when he was 13 and 14. We never considered it to be life-threatening in any way. It was a challenge, but we all made it through. And at that time, we were a family of four, me and my husband and two sons, Jeffrey and Eli. Then six years later, just when we thought everything was all clear, we wouldn't have to worry about cancer again, Boom, it happened. And he was diagnosed with cancer once again. This time, his original osteosarcoma, which was in his right leg just below his knee, had migrated to his lungs. The doctors told us it was inoperable. And they gave us such a horrible prognosis. It was mind-boggling. 
at 18 at that point, he was over 18 at that point, Jeffren decided that he just wasn't going to opt for any of the potential therapies that they offered him at the hospital because they told him there would be a 2% chance of extending his life by two to six months if he did that. He decided to opt for natural means. We supported him amazingly for all of that. Mm -hmm. My husband is also a healer. His healing gifts awakened the first time Jeffrey had cancer. And the second time, mine awakened. See, that gives me chills. That gives me chills. It was something I was completely clueless about. I had to be told that I possessed these gifts, and I started using them for Jeffrey. The first thing to emerge was a healing gift in my in my fingers, actually one finger to start with, and it spread from there. And I was able to put my hand on Jeffrey's back, which is where most of his pain was from his lungs, and ease his pain. Then the gifts started expanding and expanding, and Jeffrey. He went through a number of things. In the expanding of my gifts, one of the very first projects I was given by the divine is a chance to bring frequencies to the planet that were new to the planet, that were especially needed at this time of enormous transition that the planet has been and is still going through. They took the form for me of healing tinctures, drops that you could take internally and that you could apply externally as well. Many of them were based on situations that we had in our family with our friends, and some were specifically geared toward Eli. There was one called Life Threatening Disease, which I think we have shifted the name to more something more positive like remedy for life di life supporting disease i don't even remember what we call it right now mm -hmm. but he, he, we had him take this along with a very strict regimen that we had created that david my ex-husband and i my then husband and i created for jeffrey mm -hmm. he followed everything to the letter for the first six eight weeks mm -hmm. We went back to his oncologist who was monitoring him during this time and had another x-ray done. The doctor did a double take when he looked at the x-ray because there had been so much improvement in the mass in his lung. We were elated and we're so grateful that this whole new therapy that we had developed was coming out. and. Jeffrey was elated too, and he was so elated, he got a little cocky. He got confident in what he was doing, what we were all doing, and he let things slide mm -hmm. for a few days. He did what he wanted to do for a few days, and he was at that time 19, almost 20, and he would go in his room and we respected his privacy so we were not there to stand over him to make sure he did every little thing he was supposed to do it only took a few weeks of him sloughing off on his protocol to reverse everything and that was all it took his cancer was so aggressive that we were never never able to catch up again. Wow. And even though all of these gifts had been blossoming within me and have continued to blossom enormously over the years, Jeffrey had a personal choice to make. And he made it. And it was not the choice I would have chosen for him or that his dad would have chosen for him. But he made the choice and even by the time he changed his mind, it was simply too late. The body was so far immersed in this situation that was degrading to it that it couldn't be reversed at that point. 
but you we can make him comfortable but you could can make him happier reverse what you had previously seen with him following uh, what you had been given as a, a program and a process for him to follow just that period of time with him not being diligent with keeping up with doing what he was supposed to do it wasn't enough for his body to now um reverse like you had originally seen when he first started exactly yeah but you know what that that tells uh, individuals that when you're given a plan and you're given a process and you're led to follow in a, a down a certain path you have to remain diligent we it, it to, to me the, the a lesson learned from this is uh it can feel good and it is good but in order for it to stay good you got to continue to do what you're supposed to do yes you do yeah and you know that is half of the story the other half is that my husband with whom I'd had a happy marriage for 23 years came to me a few months before we lost Jeffrey and said he wanted a divorce. Wow. Alora, yes. how did you take that? I, I felt like a knife had been plunged in my heart. Did you have any idea? I'd actually had some inkling, some intuitive thoughts had come to me about that so as much as it was a surprise it wasn't as much of a surprise as i it might have been mm -hmm. and i couldn't even let loose with all my feelings because i had to be strong for jeffrey yeah. i had to be strong eli. for eli eli his younger brother and i I maintained that strength. So I had both of these situations going on and we weren't going to do anything about separating until after Jeffrey's situation was resolved. Mm -hmm. And about 6 weeks after Jeffrey passed, we he moved out. Unreal. Yes, it was. And I remember I remember walking. It was in West Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where we lived at the time, the, there was a light dusting of snow on the ground. It was, I think, November or December. I walked and I talked to the divine within. And we had a big conversation. And from my side, most of the conversation was, ah, what do I do? Right. <laughs> How do I handle this? Yes. But we had a conversation and the information that I got was that I had a choice. Mm. I could view this as the absolute worst thing that could ever happen to me, or I could view it as the opportunity of a lifetime, the opportunity to do things that might not have come up otherwise, and to gain my strength as an individual, because I was very dependent emotionally on my now ex-husband correct i decided to do that and i did a lot of what we're doing today we we pivot as in what we need to do in correct. society today i pivoted and i began to view it in a different light i was able to maintain my positivity which was perfect because i needed to be positive for jeffrey no matter what was happening with him and I was able to get through it. Wow. Now I want to backtrack. I want to, because I want to come back to this whole, the mindset of you switching from the negative towards the positive and what sure. that has done to you personally and professionally. But I want our listeners to gain a better understanding about when you stated how when Jeffrey was first diagnosed, your husband um became aware of his healing abilities uh and then when the second um diagnosis was made when it um, had returned now you experience it can you describe to us how that happened did, did it was there a, a an inner voice was there a a feeling that you felt was it a, a tingling was it an idea to just lay your hands on your son's back and 
and to meditate or to pray. Tell me, kind of walk us through what, what does that look like? I wish I could say that any of those things happened, but I, I said before, I was completely clueless. My mind didn't go there because David was the healer in the family, and I just left it to him. Mm-hmm. He told me, my, my ex-husband, who has very subtle perception, told me that I had these gifts that were starting to blossom. And he helped me to be able to use them. I see. So it doesn't. So sometimes you know, someone else may see the gift in you. Exactly. I see. Exactly. You don't have to have all of the perceptions yourself. You don't have to do everything all yourself. Mm-hmm. There are so many people available you can call on to help you to see if you have gifts to develop any gifts that you have and that i was very fortunate in that regard in that i had someone right there who could see it now all of this was not a complete surprise because i had been meditating i'd been a meditation teacher for at that point more than 35 years it was not surprising that new gifts had been had developing during that time but I didn't know it. I didn't see it. And there was so much else going on that I, I didn't look. You didn't look. I wow. didn't look. And how did the developing of the tinctures and uh, the, the leading to, you know, put your, your hands and your fingers at certain places on his back, how, how did those things come about? Did you say, did you have an idea of, hmm, there should be something that we could put together to help this general category? And did, did it lead to research for certain things to put in there? Was it a meditation and, and things were brought back to your remembrance of, of uh, you know, mint thistle or different things that you could add? Tell us how, how that came to be. When I learned I had a gift of healing and touch, it was a quite simple, instinctual, intuitional thing to be able to just put my hands exactly where they needed to be on Jeffrey's body to heal his pain. And that, that was the mother thing. Mm, that yeah. was, I wanted to ease my child's suffering. Correct. And with the, with the tinctures, the drops, again, I was clueless. I had to be told that I could do this. Mm-hmm. It, w- I, it might have occurred to me later, but I didn't know. So the, the names of the products that were later created came through David. Okay. And he told me what they were. And I went back in the bedroom, closed the door, and created them. Mm. I called upon the divine, I asked for divine help, and was told what products to use to put in them, how to create them, and put the divine energy and intelligence in there so that they would do what they were supposed to do, what they were intended to do. Mm -hmm. The products that went in were used in ways that they were not necessarily used for historically speaking. They were put there to create a structure to hold the divine intelligence and the divine energy that went in. Mm -hmm. And I was told, because this is a a time of enormous transition in, in the world, that things are shifting and exponentially they're just shifting so much and this has been going on the shift has been going on for a while for a long while yes I agree with that absolutely and i was told that these products were created to help us all to get through this shift smoothly and easily mm-hmm. so they were created specifically with this time in mind they were the divine was able to kind of jury rig something. I'm sorry, I keep knocking my plant here. Poor plant. That's okay. <laughs> I, they were able to arrange things in the universe 
so that the drops would work as they were supposed to. Wow. And see, I'm going to, I'm going to pause right here for my listeners who are, are, are more biblically based. Okay. Cause here's where I, the reason why I really wanted to have you on is to have individuals appreciate. So you've stated, you know, I had a conversation with the divine and, and I went, uh, before the divine for, you know, leading and guidance. We, um, those of us that are biblically based, we would just simply say, I want before the throne of God. And so I want individuals to not be so caught up in the nomenclature, if you yes. will, but in the results behind, um, behind the, the process, behind the words, behind whether or not we're stating, um, I meditated and, and I was led as a mother to lay hands, but when I put the, the um, ingredients in for the tinctures and I went before the divine in order for, since they were being used in the non-traditional way, them put together as a whole, I went before the divine that they would work in the way in which it was intended. For us, we would simply say whether or not we use blessed oil or a prayer cloth. We still went before God. We prayed. We anointed the individual or we placed the oil on their head. We attached a prayer cloth to uh, their clothing and, and prayed. I want individuals to see this uh, parallel alignment, if you will. Um, and, and although I may say, God, you may say divine, but what I want people to appreciate at the end of the day, was there healing that occurred? Was there help that occurred? Was there uh, a, a blessing that came through uh, allowing you to go through the grieving process um, much more smoother because of this connection with the divine? And I love the way that you say we carry the divine, we all have a divine nature. And so you may say, you know, we are all divine and we all have access to our divine nature. Absolutely we do through our heart. Again, biblically based, absolutely. We just simply say that's God living in us. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so there is a way that you can, the, the way in which you present allows a for a larger audience to have an ear that would appeal to their senses and still get the work done especially for those individuals that may feel that by hearing god or christ or the bible they may feel has too much of a religious connotation and that is not the basis of this podcast at all it is not a religious podcast it is very much so dealing with our spirituality and what I want individuals to get is the help they need and so I want them to be able to hear it from different perspectives so if one guest comes on and says that I had a conversation with God and the conversation mostly went like I was crying like God how am I going to live through this I don't know how I'm going to get through it and God spoke to me and said x y and z well then the Lord comes and says I had a conversation with the divine and most of it it looked like this but at the end of that conversation I was led to, I knew to lay hands on my son. Uh, my husband came up with the name of the tinctures and then I was led to put the ingredients in there. Now these were ingredients that were, were used in a non-traditional way, but them combined gave the healing result that we needed. So we're saying- I love that. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. I love how you express it too. I believe that we all have this spark of divine within us, whatever name we call it by. Yes. You know, there are so many different people in the world. You need a lot of different ways of expressing it, and you need a lot of different, seemingly different paths to get there to appeal to different people. But as you said, the goal is the same. We all just want to be closer to God. Absolutely. And that it takes wisdom to be able to understand that there are times when you need to take a different approach in order to appeal to the masses. Because 
the way you phrase certain things is going to hit one person's heart, whereas with another, they're going to get turned off by a word. And so I want to be able to create different perspectives. You hear it all. The end result is the same. But if, if someone saying it a little bit differently causes it to pierce your heart and cause you to now open up to this healing, to this divinity, to this ordained will, to this um, ability to uh, heal uh, through a situation instead of necessarily being delivered out of it, if, if the different words allow you to receive that, then great. <laughs> Let's use the different words because the end result is we want individuals to, to experience this divine nature that is within us. You know, we, yes. in a biblically basis, God lives within me. So therefore, I'm carrying him. When I go to church, I brought him with me. I didn't go to church to find him. I brought him with me when I walked in the door. You know Perfect. what I'm saying? Yes. Exactly. So, so when you said that, it was that that there appeared to be a well i took it as a turning point for you when you when your husband said okay you know what um i'm i want a divorce i'm i'm kind of done and he, you went before the divine and okay whoa how am i dealing with this and you stated i could have either focused on the negative or i could look at this in a positive light and therefore my vision, changing my vision, resulted in a change in your path. Because if you're looking towards the negative, negative is where your, if your mind and your thoughts go negative, that's where your actions are going to go too. But by changing your thought process into a positive one, that, that created something very different for you, didn't it? It did. It did. Absolutely did. And I had a history of being an extremely positive person anyway. Mm -hmm. I was all I had done in the past. But everybody needs help at different points. And, and I would love to tell you that I'm completely there, that every moment of every day is spent positively. And most of it is. But every once in a while, things come along. And there is no shame in that it we're all taking steps of progress we are all growing when you think of it there are things that you can do to uplift your spirits that i i think that people should be taught in school it's i, I mean we you can't do at a very do, early age you can't do religion in school now i understand that and that's fine but you can learn to become more positive thinking Correct. Definitely. Absolutely. Because, you know, and I love what you said about most of it has been, you know, uh, with a positive light, but, you know, sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of a struggle, but there's no shame in that. I love that you said that because I can't tell you the number of individuals who, uh, myself included, I was at times, um, you know, a couple of decades ago, I would not you would not see me have a moment or speak in a certain way because I felt like oh, that I was either letting the person down and sharing my kind of negative moment or I was letting myself down. But what I have learned, especially through my breast cancer diagnosis and treatment, is allow people to have moments. It's okay to have moments. You, first of all, you're not, thoughts can pop into your head. And so you, you may not be able to control a thought getting in your head, but you can certainly choose not to dwell on that thought. You yes. can now take a, 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 if a negative thought popped into your brain, put a positive one in there, right? So certain things just kind of yes. like just happen, but you can now react within a way that now you're going to change the spin on that. Um, but if you're condemning yourself um, for having a thought in the first place or condemning yourself for, you know, having a couple of hours where when you woke up in the morning, you went to bed like tomorrow's going to be a great day. And then you wake up in those first couple of hours, you just unsettled. And, you know, it's OK to kind of have that unsettling, but use that as an opportunity to evaluate. Hmm. Is this something that's being laid on my heart and on my on my mind, am I feeling heavy for someone else? Maybe the heaviness is not a negativity towards me, but maybe I'm carrying somebody else's burden. So maybe I just and need to be 
in light and in tune with what's going on. Maybe I'm carrying this for somebody else. Have you ever experienced something like that? Oh, absolutely. And again, we put things differently. What I would say is you pick up problems from other people and things that you have inside you are largely your own, but not necessarily everything is from you. Correct. And I loved what you said also about you touched on negative self-talk mm-hmm. that we are critis- critical of ourselves. We are very hyper aware of everything that we do wrong, unless we have a personality type that just, just doesn't go there. Right. <laughs> unless we're narcissistic and say, you know, I was going to say that, me. but I, it's never yes. me. <laughs> right. but when you have those thoughts, a lot of times you'll catch yourself and you'll start feeling guilty about it because you know you shouldn't be thinking that way. But I'm, I'm going to just advise, and whether you take the advice or not, please, it's up to you. Don't feel guilty. Just say, okay, yes, I'm having a thought, but I'm really an absolutely amazing individual and go on in the more positive way. Just kind of shift it around. And you mentioned introducing the, the opposite thought. Mm -hmm. And that is a perfect way to do it. Even if it takes you a little while to talk yourself into it, you can be going through the uplifting process. And you know, you'll be closer to God, in my opinion, if you are more positive. You allow more light in. You allow more of the divine in when you are open and you are more open when you are positive. Correct. Absolutely. And you know, in, in the, and I, I will say this because I'm familiar with the Bible, but there is a scripture that says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, think on these things. So God even instructs us, don't be anxious for anything. And when your thoughts go in a negative way, think about the things that are pure. Think about the things that are of a good report. Think about the things that are lovely. And so even if in a moment when I'm having a negative thought, if I just say, it's going to be all right. Shree, girl, you got this. You had it the last time. You're going to have it this time. Oh, I thank you. I got this. I got this. And it doesn't have to be different thoughts. It can be repeating that same thought. I got this. You woke up saying, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I'm going to make it. But just continuing to say to yourself, I can do this. I can do this. As you do the research to get yourself out of this situation, as you are uh, placing the call to the accountant and he's about to tell you what your finances are looking like, again, just reinforcing that you've got this, that you can get through this, that this too shall pass, and and focusing more on, well, what's my test? What What is the purpose of what I'm going through now? What can I learn from it? Take it as a challenge, not as something negative that's being done to you, but what is the challenge that you can learn and grow from this so that now this is another experience on my shoulders, I can, I can walk a little bit taller now because I've conquered this. Now, how can I help somebody conquer this in their future? And then now I know this is a test. I don't even have to go through that test again because I passed the test this time. And you there have are blessings to- in everything, whether we see it or there not. You go. There you go. I love how you think, Cherie. I it- dare you go. And so if you don't open your eyes to the blessing, you can miss it. Boom, make it pass you by because you're so caught up in the the negativity of that moment. And then the blessing is right there and then you miss it. You know, and I, I, you know, it's not even obvious sometimes what the blessing is until many years later. Many years later. So it's important to trust that there, there is some blessing in within whatever is going on. That is correct. Now you help women get to a a higher level. Um, Well, I'm going to put it this way. I know that you help women discover, nurture, and empower their inner goddess, I believe you. Yes. Their inner goddess to to fully, to help them fully live out their purpose um, and to claim their joy. 
can you describe how you do that? You know, and I know, I mean, you have a number of different products, but just kind of the, the overview of how you help women do that and, and what got you into focusing. Uh, I know that you help uh, men and women alike, but there is a particular focus and, and a gift that you have for helping women. I want to, I want the audience to hear one, how you help them to realize that come into uh, their full potential uh, and to understand their, the, the healing that each of us have been gifted with, but then what laid upon your heart to do a particular focus with women? I can relate to women very clearly. I can relate to what they might've been through in the past because of my own past experiences. And I can relate to what has happened to me as a result yes. of all the, the spiritual evolution that I've undergone. Since the time, since the tinctures were first created, I've gone through a number of things spiritually, a number a new gifts have opened up for me. I can use divine healing energies with particular intentions to do particular healings. And by the way, when we first started, I set in place a healing energy to heal your listeners from coronavirus to help make that process more smooth and easy for them. So yes, so I can do that with a number of different things. And I, though I, I love men too, I am more familiar I with too. good with the heart, <laughs> the heart of womankind. Yes, it's yes, and and everything is so much based in the heart. But what I do with my goddesses is that I help them to enliven the heart, to be able to open the heart and open and expand their perception so that they can understand why and how they are a goddess. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually writing a book about that right now. During the, the, the downtime with the coronavirus, I am going within more and creating something that can help my goddesses and, and many people throughout the world. And again, it doesn't, doesn't matter what tradition you come from. And in my view, and I, oh, in my view, the divine doesn't care mm -hmm. what religion you follow or what your personal beliefs are. They are there to assist you no matter what. Mm -hmm. I can easily call upon different aspects of God, different faces of God, different aspects of the divine, whether it be angels or other divine beings from different traditions of truth throughout the world. And I will be receiving the blessings and benefits from that aspect of the divine, see. no matter what I do mm -hmm. in my life. Oh, see, and I love that. And so from the Christian aspect, we say God loves us unconditionally. So there's nothing that I could do that's going to cause him to love me less and hear yes. my prayers less. And there's nothing that I could do that's going to make him love me more. What I do know is that he just wants what's best for me. And a yes. lot of times we get confused thinking that certain things are just going to fall down from heaven or certain paths are going to be made for us. But there is a work that we need to do first. You know, it's just that I can't expect that my employer is just going to send me a check every two weeks if I don't show up for work. And so we sometimes, say... Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> you can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. But it's sometimes definitely. the blessings do just come. Yes, they do. Yes, they but, do. But, but the ones that you are counting on on a regular basis, is just like we can't expect. And I'm... I'm I'm second marriage right now in second yes. marriage. So my, my first one um, was a failed marriage as well. But I know that in any relationship, a relationship won't really last unless the two people work at it. Just like my, my the benefit that I can receive um, naturally, so uh, with the gifts of healing or the gifts of encouragement or empowering or what have you that only comes as I build my relationship with my divine I call him God and so now the closer I am so the more in tune uh, your goddesses are with the divine nature I'm sure they have uh, a more richer experience 
right? Because it takes that developing. You're listening. You're following the 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 the, the tinctures work. If I were to take a tincture, and I have, and this goes back to that thought shifting from a negative to a positive. If I say it, this don't work. I'm not expecting it to work. It ain't gonna do anything. I'm just doing it because the Lord gave it to me, and it's not gonna do anything. Versus an individual who took it. And they had all faith. This is going to work. People believe that, oh, you can't just say, you can't just say uh, positive things or think positive things and the positive things happen. There has to be something else behind that. And yes, for certain things, there does. There has to be this divine intelligence. There has to be, you know, some method to your madness. But I can honestly tell you because I've experienced it for myself makes a difference between if you're doing something with a negative thought process versus when you're doing the same thing with a positive thought process. Physiologically, physiologically as a physician, as a physician, I can tell you things change. Neurotransmitters change, receptors change, your parasympathetic system responds differently. And so, yes, you have to meld the two together. And I want all of my goddesses, allures goddesses that is listening to this podcast today, you need to get in touch with Allura. This woman, I can't wait until you guys see this video. She is so beautiful. She has such a sweet countenance. I'm telling you, you could just sit with her and talk and chit chat all day and you will find that certain aches and pains that you are experiencing that go away uh don't dare grab her hand and give her a hug like i did <laughs> when we first met no problem whatsoever <laughs> you know i did want to give your listeners a gift too Please. and that is if they go to my website divinehealingenergies.com there is on the website a place where they can sign up for a free 30 minute I call it a goddess assessment, and, but men can do it too, of course, to find out where you are on your path and see how we can help you. Oh my goodness, Allura, I am so excited. Guess what, guys? I will make sure, doubly sure, you're going to have all of her contact information. You're going to have website um, and you're going to have her Facebook handles, any social media handles. I'm going to make sure that that is listed with the episode, with the show notes, uh, so that you'll be able to get in touch with her. I'm telling you guys, don't miss that free opportunity. You do not want to miss it because it will indeed change your life. Guys, I thank you so much uh, for listening. Allura has been absolutely fantastic. Allura, please tell the audience, how is Eli doing? How are you and Eli doing? Eli is doing fantastically well. It was a rough time when he lost his older brother. Sure. He was actually at this new media summit that we, where we met. Mm -hmm. You rem remember him? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Yes. He's doing really, really well. The major thing that he's stuck in the United States, he's a world traveler and he likes to be in a lot of different places and he's currently stuck because of the current situation in California, but uh -huh. he's doing well. I talk to him very frequently. Wonderful. Well, Allura, hang on for a minute. I just want to let my guests know, thank you so much for tuning in to episode number five of Where Medicine Meets Ministry. Dr. Sheree talks faith and facts. Can't wait to talk to you guys on our next episode.